a you know really popular support support champion for a long time but i've always loved him because it doesn't matter if he lands them it's his presence that is so scary um and we see right now varus 164 cs to graves 135 so like 30 cs up and graves is one of the best early game laners in the game um so certainly varus not too shabby himself does get that attack speed bonus when he kills the minions which makes him a force to be reckoned with but i think it's really the presence of blitzcrank it makes you really concerned about going up for those last hits because because you can be hooked. Not necessarily that you are going to be hooked or that Blitzcrank is going to land them, but you have to be so careful because you don't want to get hooked, you might die. Yeah, very, very true. So another tower falls. Kick Esports managed to pick up the second tower of the game. Dragon has been pulled backwards as well, so it looks as though in faculty trying to set up something on this dragon. They've got four champions flying around the bottom lane, but very, very timid, and for some reason my dragon icon has uh, bugged out just it a little moved. bit. <laughs> yep. You have some unusual uh, unusual bugs with your game, I've never very, seen Very, very nice rocket grab. They pull Thormac back, he gets Charm from Grulim as well. The Igniter's on him. Are they going to be able to deal enough damage? There's the first Spirit Rush, second Spirit Rush. Third one is going to be able to pick up the kill. Paranoia does get brought out right at the end there, and I think a little bit unnecessarily. It wasn't really required. But yeah, graphics bugs are plenty today for my League of Legends game. Yeah, so I, I am just seeing that uh, that battle now. You described it exactly as it happened. Although, yeah, that, that paranoia, probably not necessary. Darkness. Uh, uh, now we do have an idol of Duran happening. It gets instantly cancelled, though, from uh, Galio in the middle lane. They do lose a two for two exchange. Gluco is under so much damage. One more leap strike pulls him out. Altorus lands a rocket grab, but pulls Jack towards him. And Jack just says, Thank you very much. I'll land another auto attack and land that kill. Altorus is now putting the damage. He has counter attack. He has leap strike and empower available. One more hit is going to be all that's needed. Is he, he should be able to get to safety. The heal on the armor buff from Soraka. And wow, kick esports. Winning the big engagements once they happen. How are they even winning? That that Galio ultimate didn't even go off. They don't have Mundo there. Just a uh, yeah, amazing amount of damage from Jax and picking up those later kills. That is impressive. The one thing, uh, relatively amusing, Blitzcrank pulling people to uh, to their death again. This time it was his own death. It's assisted suicide by uh, by Blitzcrank <laughs> and that <laughs> assisted <hook>. suicide. <laughs> I like that. Um, the thing that I find interesting, I, I, or, or what I missed, was it Ari's charm? Uh, it might have been a Blitzcrank silence. I didn't actually see what cancelled Warai's Idol of Durand, because he started co uh, channeling it, and it instantaneously got cancelled. But I mean, there's quite a lot of crowd control. You've got the silence from Movert. If he'd activated his power fist and then got taunted, the knockup would have done it as well. You've got the knockup from Jarvan, uh, potentially the ultimate from... Um, Varus, you know, there's a lot of crowd control that could have turned that off or could have disabled it. Yeah, I didn't see what it was. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the silence, um, you know, but it was certainly hard to see. But I believe it was the silence, and I think. I think, you know, this can happen. <laughs> and I, I might be proved wrong uh, that, you know, when Galio flashes in, if. If uh, Blitzcrank knows that the, the ultimate is coming, he can kind of just preload his silence, you know, hit R, and it'll be delayed a split second, and Galio's ultimate will then be cancelled. Even though Blitzcrank was inside of it and is essentially taunted, um, he's able to cancel it before he's taunted, um, so to speak. I'm pretty sure that can happen. I think that is what did happen. Um, if not, then I have no explanation for it. <laughs> yeah. Chat, chat believe it was the power fist. Chat believe it was the power uh, fist. So keeping an eye on it. That's where they, they think it was. Blitz running in there with those uh, electrified gloves. But have a look <laughs> at the scores at the moment. Soraka, Urban Star, 1-0-10. Playing a perfect support role at the moment. And Ari Grulam, sitting at 0 2 5, still hasn't completed any major items at the 24 minute mark. But he has enough gold. There's enough gold there to have completed a death, a death cap. There's enough gold there to have completed the Athene's Unholy Grail, if that's what he wanted as well. Um, and it, it, it sort of shows. Ari's not, not a huge factor in these fights. Right, which is right, because she generally has really great early game presence. Um, but Galio, yeah, despite the fact that there's so many ways, well, so many ways to cancel his ultimate, mainly Blitzcrank has his three separate ways to cancel it, which is a huge problem for Galio. Uh, but it doesn't even matter, he's still an effective AP carry without his ultimate. I often think of him as an ultimate bot, but uh, we're kind of been proven that that's not the case. Looks like we're going to see an Athens Holy Grail on him, whereas I still have no idea what's going to be built by Grolem. I mean, Deathcap would make sense, Athens Holy Grail would make sense, uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter. I mean, the general build I see on her is Woda into 
Rylai's Crystal Scepter, because you don't actually need the, you know, tons and tons of damage. A little bit of survivability on her goes a long way, so she can keep on putting out that damage throughout the fight. Now, we do have Baron set up for Kick Esports. They have started it, they started putting some good damage onto it as well. 4,000 hit points has been dropped to at the moment. We do have Dr. Munda. He's pulling everybody away. They've decided to fall back. Jarvan has managed to catch three in Cataclysm, but just gets instantly blown up once they turn their attention to it. And committing one versus four is never the smartest of ideas. The next one to four is Blitzcrank. And Kick are just going to go all the way back to Baron. They are definitely control of this game. This is going to be a pretty uncontested Baron unless uh, Blue Lightning tries a Paranoia Smite Steal. And you always have to be worried about that. I'm catching up on the fight now, but yeah, certainly Jarvan engaging there without uh, without Varus anywhere near the screen. He was busy taking race or something along those lines. Uh, you know, would have been a great thing had he been able to catch people and Varus followed up with his ultimate. Uh, yeah, it just wasn't to be, unfortunately. Ari manages to commit and go as well. Next thing, Nocturne, he flashes over the wall, which is which is very uh, okay. So. Well, I, I don't. The, the thinking is a little bit flawed. He opted to flash over the wall and try smite steal, and then was hoping to use paranoia to pick up a kill. There was no vision, so he couldn't have used paranoia to dive onto a champion. Oh, look at the damage coming out from Razel. Backshot and three auto attacks melt Varus. And now Glucose is going in for a fight as well. Ignite onto Warrior. He needed one attack, didn't even get his passes off, his passive off, so Galia's going to be able to get away from that. Razel then turns and he almost takes out Glucose solo. Thormac should be able to finish that off as long as he keeps landing those infected cleavers. A flash, Rocket Grab pulls him backwards. The Power Fist doesn't go off before Buckshot does. Blitzcrack once again pulling himself to death and unfortunately in faculty just falling further and further behind. Thormac has Sadism active. If he can land one more cleaver, that might be all that's required. He's still staying for this. He wants this kill. There we go. The cleaver does eventually finish it off. Now it is going to cost him his life though. No ultimate to run away. But um, what Nocturne did, he had no vision in the pit, he had no wards, so he had to flash over the wall to get vision and then try smite. But then of course he has no escape because he can't paranoia to get away. And unfortunately it did uh, cost him his life. And Kick Esports currently sitting 20 kills to 9. Huge gold advantage. And their game to throw. <laughs> They're going to throw. That's uh, that's what you do when you have the lead. You try to your best to throw the game. <laughs> well, if they can hold this Baron, if they can push down with Baron, uh, get an advantage from this for the next little bit, that's going to be a very, very big uh, 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 telling factor. And you get a few more tiles now. We do have some aggression. Jax, one empower and leap strike. Hards Grulam's hit points. Now turn his attention to move, but he's applying the slope from that Trinity Force just over and over and over, hitting so much damage. Blitzcrank goes down, 4 versus 5, and Kick have Baron buff. I don't think there's a whole lot that in faculty can do about this. Yeah, probably not. I'm, I'm going to catch up eventually to, to the actual occurrences here. Um, but I think maybe we saw why, on the one hand, Blitzcrank is popular as a support now, but also has been unpopular in the past. Yes, you have a lot of lane presence and a really great teamfight presence, but you can also, you know, pull yourself to your own death, pull your teammates to their death, or pull other people to your teammates' death, and uh, you assume a lot of the blame as uh, as Blitzcrank. Yeah, it is, it, is, it is one of the flaws, especially when a team is that far ahead. If you leash somebody like Mundo or... Um uh, Jax, for Galio. example. Even Galio, yeah. Leash Galio, he's just going to pop his ultimate and say, thank you very much. That, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Saves me using a flash. Yep. So, anyways, guys, just to let you know, this is, of course, in faculty on the left-hand side, facing off against Kick Esports. This is the DreamHack qualifiers. We will be jumping into Team Alternate against Millennium in 10 minutes' time. And, of course, the team that goes out or that is defeated, they are out of the qualifiers, they cannot make it to DreamHack. My name is Quickshot and I'm here with Soter. Thanks for joining us, Soter. Thank you for having me. Very exciting. Uh, yeah, I don't have the opportunity to cast EU games too much. We do have some EU players that, uh, you know, play on the US servers that I've casted for before. Um, and they often, you know, entice me to come over and play with them um, over on EU. But uh, as you'll see, my champion is still, or some are still level 5 or thereabouts. So I haven't had a, enough time. It's actually hard to level up uh, Smurfs. It takes quite a while. Yeah, you forget how long it takes to get to level 30 after you've done it mm -hmm. once. It really yep. is quite difficult. 
So we are watching the last stages of this match kick in a dominating position. They've picked up Baron, they've picked up several several dragons. Very, very far ahead. And once again, I have to point out Urban Star and Soraka. 1017. 21 kills in it. He's been involved in 18. That's as good as you're gonna get when you're playing a support player. <laughs> as, you, as you're talking about them, it's kind of funny though, because I saw Urban Star, you know, bought the Shrelia's Reverie, but then bought a Ruby Crystal, sold the Ruby Crystal, bought an Oracle. So obviously it's really beneficial to have that Oracle, but uh, a little bit of a misstep there, and I only really call it to attention because that's something I always do. Um, you know, buy, buy an item and then be like, wait a second, I need more wards or I need an Oracle, especially as a support, obviously. And having a look at Grulam as well, sitting with Ari, 135, still in tier 1 boots. Death Gap is completed, got two ingredients out of the three for a Rhylize Crystal Scepter, has a Chalice of Harmony, and I think Grulam just getting, you know, deciding, or committing to one build, saying, I want to go this way, I want to build these items. The game obviously didn't go their way, lose, losing a few team fights and being forced to change his strategy. And now he's sort of in the middle of no man's land. He hasn't completed anything extremely powerful, uh, you know, other than the Death Cap. But he doesn't have the movement speed to get away from a Trinity Force Jax, a Sadism, um, Dr. Mundo. You know, mm -hmm. if, if you can't get away from those uh, bruises, you can't put distance between you, it, it's just going to melt. You can't rely on your ultimate. He does land a very, very good chance. Of the f they do manage to blow up Graves very, very quickly. A nice idol of Duran craps all four members of Infaculty, so they do get one kill in reply. Varus' ultimate does manage to snare or, snare or lock up a few champions there. Jax dives past the turret, he puts a few more kills, locks up Varus, carries on attacking. One more turret hit wraps him up, and this is a 3 for 3 trade. Galio is very, very low, takes an Astral Blessing, so that's going to heal him up. He does have blue buff, so he's going to be waiting for that air grenade and the big gust of wind fart of his to try and pick up a kill. But unfortunately misses them, so unable to land that one. So 3 for 3, C play, not necessarily completely dead in the water, but still very far behind. Yeah, certainly. When you have Galio on your team, you always have the ability to kind of come back later on in the later on in the game because of those pulls. Although in that case, we didn't see a pull. We saw the Ari Charm, which is kind of equally as deceptive. People, I mean, I feel like even pro players don't realize, hey, it's a 975 range, you know, projectile that's very thin, can go through minions, can get through, you know, your front line and bruisers very easily. So I feel like it's often underestimated as a great initiation tool later on in the game. And uh, one of the reasons why I feel like she's so successful, especially in uh, solo queue. Well, how do you feel about the Varus pick? Do you think Varus matches up to other AD carries at the moment? You know, can he, can he compare to the likes of, you know, Corky and Ash and things like that? I, I am not a big fan of Varus in the sense that I, I know he has a pretty decent early game, but I, he just doesn't have an escape, and I don't really feel like he compares to... I don't know, I, I guess he's most like... MF would be kind of my impression, because they both have the healing debuff, neither of them have escapes. You really... You know, you have to consider the fact that they don't have escapes, you know, along with their late game presence. Um, and he doesn't have great steroids either unless he actually picks up a kill, so he's kind of a steamroll champion in the likes of an AP or Katarina. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan, but I know people are picking him up. He's, he's not terrible. He's just uh, basically the first AD carry I feel that isn't, you know, grossly overpowered that they on release uh, for a long time. Of course, we had Graves and Vayne before that, who were both incredibly strong. How is Vayne in the U.S. scene? Because she's not picked extremely often because of her weak laning phase over here in EU. Uh, yeah, no, she's, certainly she's fallen off a lot, but there are, you know, people in solo queue in particular that pick her a lot. I think Double Lift still plays her in tournaments, um, so she's still seen. Um, certainly Huge she's still damage those... going down at the moment. Altoris oh. doesn't a chance of the facing, it's forced, back, forced backwards. Move it now, in and amongst all the champions, gets taken out from Dr. Mundo's uh, burning agony. There is two kills in reply though, so Mundo's the only one to fall. Two in reply, make that three for an in faculty. Kick Esports currently with four champions still alive. Now Ari's running the opposite direction to safety. You're going the wrong way, Fox Lady. That's not the way to safety, mm -hmm. so they're just going to ignore her, turn their attention to the inhibitor. And Kick are now going to take out both inhibitors, and this could be game. I'm catching up on the fight right now. I suspect that is game. It does not look good. Uh, <laughs> it looked good 15 seconds in the past. Although Jack's chasing Ari quite a while. Ari's one of those people you don't want to chase, especially once she gets that Rylas Crystal Staff Jar. She can uh, hit you for a long, long period of time here. But it looks like, is it game? Uh, very, very shortly. Now, pushing down the last Nexus turrets, Ari did manage to get uh, 
blown up. Compliments a couple of auto attacks and a buckshot from Razal. And then one more star call from Urban Star. Manages to pick it up. Galio's throwing out that idol of Duran. They've turned their attention to the Nexus. And that's going to be GG right now. Soraka finishes the game 2 0 26. Ooh, that is not a bad score for a support. Not bad at all. All right, so guys, that is now another game. So that's, I believe, round number two for today's Qualify completed. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at the scoreboard. We're going to have a small five-minute break. Uh, in five minutes' time, we will be back with Alternate versus Millennium. So I'm going to mute our microphones. I'm going to put some music on in the background. And we'll be back in five minutes' time. Sounds good. I am excited. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So uh, I'll chat to you on Skype. And everybody else, enjoy the techno. As we enter the last 10 minutes here on Music Matters, going to recap some of those tunes. After the big tune from Tate and Credlin, we had Karanda with Cloud9. That was Juventa on the remix duties there. A couple of spins for him this show. That, that can be found on the Alter Ego imprint. And then Dash Berlin with Surf, Matiska and Jaren with Man on the Skyfire. And that was Shogun's awesome Big Club remix. Taking things up another gear, we're into the final stage of Music Matters right here on After Hours FM.
Hey, 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 what's up, guys? We are in the lobby, uh, or at least it's starting to fill up. So while we're in the last few minutes before the lobby actually is loaded, I'm going to do a very quick shameless bump. Uh, we are, of course, playing and watching the um, DreamHack qualifiers. If you head over to reddit.com, you can see the thread. Uh, it is, of course, DreamHack MSI beat it. You can see the thread up. We'll throw it up in chat in just a second. Uh, my name is Quickshot, and I'm involved in a project called Into LOL. We're going to be uh, launching a website very, very soon. If you guys could go check it out, facebook.com forward slash Into LOL. And then in the background, Sote, he's, of course, a very highly ranked um, ELO player from the US side, doing some shout casting, streaming, things like that. And you can follow him on Twitter, at LOL Sote. That's S-O-T-E-R-E. -E. I'll throw the link up in chat. So, Te, do you want to have a little bit of a shameless bump for yourself? <laughs> yes, certainly. I would appreciate that. Um, I am Soter, U.S. player, streamer, commentator, all of the above. I work with GG Chronicle. Uh, you can find us at ggc.leecraft.com. And we're also on OwnTV at OwnTV slash GG Chronicle. We have me streaming most of the day, which is uh, obviously... U.S. time, and then we have a lot of shows that go on in the evening. We have a Trinity Force podcast. We have some community games that we shoutcast for um, and other fun stuff. So stop on by sometime and certainly check out ggc.leadcraft.com. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, yeah, that's it, guys. I'm obviously quick shot. We have Soter over there. Check it out. Twitter, at lolsoter, facebook.com slash into lol. Some of you are saying on chat, yes, um, I am, in fact, working on the, a similar project with Mythos, so go check it out. Um, so, Te, have you got the game name and password on Skype? 